Hello and welcome to Practical Knife Reviews. Today we're looking at a set of knives. This is the Canon brand Sailor's Knives three-piece set. They come in this little box with a plastic cover and you can see you've got a spear point, a sheep's foot, and basically like a reverse tanto slash coping blade. In any case, these are knives that are made for sailors, people working on boats, particularly these are uh, traditionally these anchor style knives. That's a common motif with these style of knives. Uh, they're typically used for rope. And yeah, you get all three of these for $16.99. Not a bad deal considering they've got actual wood handles. The fit and finish is, is pretty decent on these. There's one ding out of this one, but the fit and finish is pretty decent. The centering is quite good on all of them. You get a little display box, not that that's much to, you know, write home about, but you can see the centering is good on those. And the centering is good on this. The only fit and finish issue really, you can see the centering is pretty much dead on in all three of these cases. You've got actual wood handles. What kind of wood? Do not know. It's probably just something cheap that's dyed. You've got no idea. Stainless steel blades, what kind of stainless steel? I don't know. I wrote into uh, SMKW asking, and they said that the company uh, didn't provide that information. So my assumption is that it's either a 420 series or a 440A stainless steel. Just your highly stain resistant, easy to sharpen, but doesn't hold an edge very long stainless steel. But you can see you get three pretty decent knives. There's a little bit of gap in there. We'll look more at the fit and finish on the inside. You get three knives that are all really classically designed, other than perhaps this one, for $16.99. Now, I'll just briefly tell about one issue that was with this one. The other two have basically no fit and finish issues than other, other than slight gapping. Just a little bit of fluff that I got in there when I was greasing it. This one might have a bit of blade wrap right about here. I uh, sharpened it out and I haven't really had it come back, but I haven't used this one that much. I mostly use the reverse Tonto, but I can actually see the blade wrap right there. So I might have to raise the kick just a bit to prevent that blade wrap from happening. There is a little bit of space, which I can do that without the blade really coming out. The other two have no blade wrap, but all three of these have a half stop, though it's kind of a funny half stop. Uh, instead of really snapping into that half open position, They've got a little bit of laziness to it, but it's firm right there and it's firm right there. You actually have to, you know, put some effort into getting it to go past, but it's got a rock in the half stop position, which is kind of fun. But uh, locks up good. As I said, perfect centering. Now I've used these and sharpened them, but uh, let's look at how, how they do. So we got a little bit of paper here. You can definitely sharpen this steel. This is the one that I've been using the most. That was me. Let's see if uh, the others are sharpened right now. Now this is my favorite shape. I, I love the sheep foot on these anchor knives. Again, that's sharp. And I'll just put it back in here. And the spear point. Again, there's that little bit of blade wrap, so it might not slice through right there. No, it still goes through. Although I did feel it hang up a little bit right there. I don't know, you probably didn't notice in the video, but in any case, you can get them sharp. Let's uh, try cardboard. Reverse Tonto. Pretty easy. A Little bit of effort, but it, it went right through without much resistance. Sheep foot, no resistance really. Spear point, a little bit of resistance. Yeah, definitely more resistance on the spear point, but not that much. Okay, uh, we'll do the apple peeling first and then we will do a little bit of rope cutting because that's what these are made for. So reverse Tonto-ish blade it's completely flat on the bottom here, so a little bit, I don't know. I, I prefer a little bit of belly for apple peeling. Not that I'm a good apple peeler. There's my caveat for most of these videos is that I'm a bad apple peeler. But 
I don't know, I find it helps to have a little bit of belly rather than a completely flat edge, but this is pretty much completely flat. It's sharp though, so you can get under it quite well. We'll try this real quick, one little pass. Again, this one is completely flat on the bottom. There's no belly to it, so same issue. But the handles are very comfortable in the re reverse uh, grip position. Super comfortable to hold in this way. Yeah, I can get, again, it's super sharp so I can get right under the surface. That's not a problem. And the spear point. This one's got a little bit of belly, which, you know, usually I'd think would make a little bit of a, a diff difference, but I don't know. The spear point in this set, I, I think I've got a little bit of work to do on it. Uh, not as not as much of a fan of the spear point in this series, uh, at least as it stands right now. Set the apple there. Now let's try some light. This is way thinner rope than you would use on a boat, but just for the sake of the argument, we put that there and put a foot on it to hold it down. Here is the, uh, the reverse Tonto. No issue there. Let's get that under my foot again. The sheep's foot. Oop. Not really an issue. I just kind of caught it a little bit too at much of an oblique angle, but that was really me rather than the knife. The spear point. Not much of an issue again. Uh, might as well just try this. Yeah, so just pressure alone, which that is enough to cut it. Pressure alone, enough with that. And with the cheek foot is enough to cut it. And the spear point. Eh, well, I put it right where the blade wrap is. No, the spear point, I've definitely got to do a little bit more work on it. I had to pull the blade a little bit to get it to cut through. Okay, so let's look at wood now. I'm only going to use the, the reverse Tonto for this, just for time saving. This is pine. This is a soft wood. Really, I should use the spear point too, uh, just because the, the edge geometry of this and the sheep's foot are going to be moderately the same. They're completely flat, and I, I've resharpened them both. So... They'll, they should cut into the wood just about the same. The spear point will be different, but like I said, I've got to do a little bit more work on the spear point. Here we go. So not bad. If I take my time, it, it goes a lot better. So the, the pine is not an issue. Those are the ones from this knife. Pretty decent. Into the fire pit. And let's try. This is red oak. This is the hardest wood that we've got in our forest. I think I picked the weird angle of the grain, but... We'll try it anyway. This has a really big kick, so you really can get your finger under it if you want. And yeah, the handles are pretty comfortable on this, if I'm being quite honest. Not that great. Let me try a different face, just because the grain seem to be coming directly at me on that face. Yeah, this one I can get much better. Sometimes that's all it is, is that the, the grain alignment where you're cutting is not ideal for feather sticking. I'm putting a little bit of effort into here, but not that much. Not the prettiest curls in the world, but they're okay. In any case, like I said, this is mostly meant as a rope knife. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a very much a budget set. You get all three of these knives for 17 bucks, but the fit and finish is pretty decent. The wood looks nice. I really like the anchor inset of the shield. Yeah, the fit and finish is, is quite good. And, uh, you know, they've got good opening and closing snaps. And, yeah, I, I mean, I quite like these. We'll take them in and look at the fit and finish a little bit closer. But first, Ma, what do you think of these? I know I've had you carry That's, this one quite a bit. That is my favorite, which I wouldn't think that I'd like it. Because when you when it's closed, it's still sticking out. So it's got kind of a large profile That's, in your pocket. That, That's right. I'll show each of these but, in profile. Yeah, functionality, um, that rope cutter is a great coupon clipper 
Oh yeah, and I box used, opener. I use this for taking pages out of mag uh, out of a magazine and clipping articles out that I wanted. I mean, I mean, if I was going to carry one in my purse, I would I would carry the rope cutter. I think it's a really well. Cool these are one. all meant to be rope cutters. You're talking about the reverse yeah. Tonto. One. Yep, I love that. My favorite is the sheep foot. The spear point I thought would have been my favorite, but it's got some issues with it, so I've got to work on that. But I really like these sheep foot. That's the most traditional of these anchor styled knives. Uh, these have been made for forever in places like Germany. They, ha they have those anchor styled sailor's knives everywhere uh, with a sheep foot blade. The spear point, it's a very pretty looking knife, but I've got to do some work on this one. But yeah, I, I, this one was great that for That was my clipping, favorite. So. Yeah, what do you think about the handles and everything? Oh, the handle, it's cool with the anchor. Uh, again, jewelry is great for women. <laughs> that's my that's my take on it. Well, I guess next we'll take it inside and uh, take a little bit closer look at the specs and everything like that. We're back on Practical Knife Reviews looking at the Canon brand three-piece sailing knife set. Again, they come in this little display box. Not that the box is anything fancy, but you know, it comes in it, so I figured might as well show it to you. We've got our reverse Tonto. We have our sheep foot. And we have our spear point blades. All of these, as I've said outside, have, let's get the light on this, hardwood handles. Let's see if you can get to see the wood grain in there. Light makes it a little bit difficult in here, but are any of these a little bit lighter than the others? You might be able to see on this one a little bit better. This is the sheep foot. Maybe not. In any case, this is actual hardwood handles, inset anchor shields, brass pins. We'll take a quick look at the fit and finish of each of these. If I can get this light to stay where I want it to. You can see. Pretty decent, a little bit of gapping up here, nothing severe, no gapping on this side. Again, it has that weird half stop where there's rock in it, but closes up dead center. No real gapping, a little bit of gapping down here, nothing severe, closes up. Dead center, but this one, like I said, has blade wrap. Let's see if I can show you that one. It's right, right up here. Yeah, you can see it. You see the blade wrap there? So I'm gonna have to address that by sharpening it out and uh, raising the cat. And this one, in terms of fit and finish, no real gaps, maybe a hint up here, but nothing severe. And again, weird half stop. Dead center. Got bales on all three of them. As I said, unspecified stainless steel blades. I would guess a 420 series or a 440A blade. Open for 440A, but again, unspecified. Got no idea. So we'll just take a look at this to save time instead of measuring everything. Uh, you can see the specs on the link that I'm posting in the description section. But while I get the measurements of this, Ma, why don't you talk about these knives? I really like this reverse Tonto, which I didn't think I would because the profile in your pocket is big. However, it's a perfect coupon clipper and box opener. And I would carry it in my purse for those two reasons alone, but the knife is also really pretty. It's just about seven inches. It might be six and seven eighths, but it's pretty close to seven inches uh, open. Three inch blade, two and maybe five eighths, two and a half to two and five eighths inch cutting length. Closed it is right at about four inches closed. Let's get the weight. Yeah, and like I said, I've, I use this for getting clippings out of a magazine, and I just put the, the tip into it and drew it, and it worked fantastic, really. No complaints about that. 86 grams. 
3.1 ounces. It's surprisingly light for a big chunk of steel and a piece of hardwood. And like I said, three piece set is $17. So I guess uh, without further ado, we'll keep this as short as we can. Uh, Ma, what do you think of this three piece set? I love and it. I, I, I like the anchor inset. It's just, it's a really pretty knife, but particularly that reverse tonto. The other two are, are nice as well, but if I was gonna pick one, it would be the reverse tonto. Yeah, and what about the, the price point for these? Um, oh, very cheap. Yeah. For a set of three. And coming in a box like that, it would be a really nice gift box. Yeah, I think so too. So I also was quite fond of these. You know, the edge holding has been okay so far. I haven't used it on anything really heavy, but I haven't lost the edge really more than I would have expected to on what I've used it on. So overall, I think that these Anchor brand, or sorry, not Anchor brand, Canon brand, three-piece sailing knife set. Yeah, I think it would be a nice gift set, especially if you have somebody who was, you know, in the Navy in your family or something like that, where they had some affiliation with boats or if they're a sailor. Um, I think that this would be a nice, a nice gift set as well. Any other final thoughts before we wrap it up, Ma? No, those are good ones. Yeah, I agree. I like them. So that'll be it for this episode of Practical Knife Reviews. Again, if you're interested in these, check in our, or in our description box. I'll have a link to them. Uh, I highly recommend these, actually, to just about anybody that wants to have, it, have this set. You're not going to get it for a better price than what they're offering. it. So that's it for this episode. Take care, everyone. We'll see you again very soon.